Hello there, welcome. Uh, my name is Shireen and today uh, this video is still going to be part of the introduction to Illustrator series but for those of you who may have caught my first video um, you'll see that that one was more of an introduction to the workspace but now things are getting interesting we're about to start creating artwork so uh, let's get to it. Um, the original video uh, please check that out in the playlist below talked about uh, your tools and your panel so I'm assuming you sort of have some general idea now uh, that this is the shape tool and again if you don't already have it out and open and ready to go just another refresher or review um, any of the tools that you see that have the triangle in the lower right corner uh, if you click and hold with your mouse, don't release, and then get yourself over to that second triangle. When you finally release, what you're going to get is what we call a tear-off palette, and that just helps you to sort of better organize your workspace, and you can kind of place it, obviously, where it's sort of most unobtrusive and out of the way. Um, and from there, you see the full family, the full range of tools that are related to each other for that particular task. So our first task, as I said, is for us to start creating artwork. So let's make our very first shape. All right, I'm just going to make a basic rectangle. So what you're not seeing is that the inside of the rectangle, the fill, is white. And since it's the same color as our artboard, we're not seeing that color. So just to show you three um, places from where we can get our different colors uh, to fill our shapes is by double-clicking on the fill bar in the toolbar. And we can change color that way. So now you see it's filled with that red. Or we can come up here. This is your control panel. The control panel also, in the same way that these series of different panels, um, it, show, it offers you uh, different options related to the task that you're currently engaged in. And what's interesting about the tool panel as opposed to the traditional panels is that it's dynamic. So for example, now I'm working with shapes. When I look up, I'm going to get different options of what I can do with those shapes. So working with color, working with stroke, etc., transparency. But let's say if I click onto my type tool, then you see now that as soon as I click to start typing, my control panel has on its own sort of dynamically changed. It's sort of aware of what I'm doing. It's tracking my um, different tools that I'm using. And it's offering, again, only the options that are related to the task at hand. So here's obviously where I would get font, font size, paragraph styling, etc. So I'm going to go back, though, to select using my black selection tool. I'm going to select my shape and up in my control panel I'm going to select a different color. So I'll select green so we can see that. And ooh, I'm actually going to select that little bit of type. We don't need that anymore. So I'm going to select my square and I want to uh, call your attention over here to the color panel. So from here I can kind of mix a different color or I can come down here into the color bar pick a different color that way and last but not least in order to fill shapes um, fill different objects fill my paths I can grab um, colors from my swatches panel so these are the default colors that I find already in Illustrator I'm just gonna pick a gray how about something cheerful there there's an orange okay so these are the different places that from where I can get color control panel fill swatches or color panel so that's my first shape and now we're sort of understanding where we can get the fill color, but related to the fill color is the stroke. So if you see here, that second option says stroke. The stroke here shows as black. You probably can't see it as well because my object is selected. So up in my control panel, I'm going to go on to stroke, and I'm going to increase the size of the stroke. In addition to my control panel, I can, of course, work with my traditional panels. So I can come up to window, stroke. And once again, um, a review from a previous video, all of the panels that appear in my window, these are panels that don't print, of course, but they're facilitating my work. Um, the panels uh, can all be found under window, the pull down menu. So under stroke is where I can continue to keep doing some more edits. Go to the side of the panel and click to show more options if I needed. So we'll get back to, there'll be another video for really focusing on um, editing strokes but for right now let's pull that shape aside and now I'm going to start sharing with you sort of some of the bigger concepts of Illustrator. This first shape, this first vector shape and we're talking about vector shapes and the reason why we're sort of in the 
um, Illustrator workspace is because working with vectors, we know that they're mathematically calculated um, paths that are already um, configured in such a way that no matter how I transform them or manipulate them, if I rotate them, if I reflect them, if I um, shrink or enlarge, they're never going to lose their precision of detail. Um, and for graphics work, uh, that's something that's sort of, you know, that's um, something that's really important to us. That's very valuable for our work. So these mathematically calculated shapes are called paths. And so if we look at this path, this is called a closed path. So any enclosed shape is called a closed path. So if I wanted to make and show you by contrast an open path, I'm going to go over here to the pen tool. The pen tool is pretty famous. So we're going to go grab that pen tool. You'll also notice that I have a tear off panel. Once again, as a review, click and hold any, any tool that has that triangle until I find that second triangle to get my tear off panel. So with the pen tool selected, I'm actually going to choose not orange, not white. I'm going to choose none. So that's also an option. Whenever we're working in Illustrator, it starts to become habit and it starts to be something that you're sort of already internalizing and realizing that you're always at any time making a choice um, around the fill color and the stroke color, even if that choice is none, but you have to sort of actively make that choice. So I'm going to say no fill on the inside. I'm going to click and release, click and release, click and release. When I'm working with the pen tool or any of my other or you know, related drawing tools, Thing that you'll notice though is that it's going to start to want to give you this very helpful preview. Illustrator is trying to help kind of guide you to the next um, path line segment. But if you're kind of done now with sort of let's make one more click, but if I'm done, um, I can choose to either click on any other tool instead, it will stop the drawing process, or if I'm still in the in the middle of in the midst of drawing, I can just click on escape okay so if we take a look now again I'm selecting this object when nothing is selected um, there's no way for me to actively get any do any work but I can actually select this path now to show it to you and what I want to show again is that I can come up to my stroke panel in the control panel I can increase the size I can also of course change the color okay and so what you're seeing here by contrast is an open path so you can see that I've only got three sides, they're not connected, so this is what we call an open path, this is what we call a closed path. When we're clicking on the open path, it has no fill. That means that if I put this shape in front of this shape, it's invisible. There's nothing filling the inside of this path. However, if I go over here now and pick a color, such as yellow, You'll see that what's going to happen is it's really going to try to fill it. I mean, imagine this sort of being a container. It's going to really fill it right up to the top. There's no closed path on this edge, so we're not going to see the stroke or a stroke color, but we'll see the fill doing its best to kind of fill the inside of that shape. So when we see any shape like this, if there's not a stroke on any of the edges, we'll know that that's an open path. So again, starting to get used to the bigger ideas um, in working in Illustrator and how Illustrator works so that we can... Um, step by step get more comfortable and work our way up to more advanced uh, tasks. So I'm going to select this object and delete it. I'm going to go back over to my closed path for example and I want to show you that while it's selected, since it's selected here, I can manipulate it, make it skinnier, make it taller. I can, since I have my bounding box on, what is the bounding box? The bounding box is this blue highlight to kind of show that it's selected, but it gives us something a little bit extra. It's giving us these little, if you see these, we call these the handles, right? So these little white boxes right here. So it's giving us these boxes. And if we come hover with our mouse right over to the corner, we're not clicking yet, but just hovering. If we come right over to the corner, that's when we get that um, the arrow, double-sided arrow. And from there, we know that we can rotate. Okay, so doing a little bit of a basic, so here we've created a shape, we can rotate it, we can shrink it, size it, etc. There's other things as we're observing this very basic shape, there's these little circles here inside. And so this is something also relatively new to the Illustrator workflow, and it helps you to move from having 
corner edges, from having corner edges, to if we click on it, click on that circle, aha. All right, so we very quickly and easily went from having um, right angle corners to having a round, more, more like a, a button, very round edged rectangle. All right, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to create another shape. I'm going to create a circle this time. I'm going to hold down my shift key. And the shift key is what we call our modifier key. So something, again, hopefully you're watching these and you're able to pause when you need and take notes. Um, the shift key is one of our modifier keys. If you're right-handed like me, your modifier hand should be your left hand. And obviously, uh, left-handers, uh, you're going to reverse it but the right hand is always on your mouse and your left hand, um, in my case, in between sipping coffee, your left hand should always be ready to work with your modifier keys and they are shift, command, and option. So shift, one of our modifier keys, um, is gonna help us to create perfectly constrained proportion. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna create a circle, but now I'm gonna create a circle with modifier key shift held down. So you can see the difference there. Select tool to delete. So let me change the color on this one. Let me change the stroke. I can access the stroke by clicking on it. It brings it to the front so it knows that I'm changing the stroke color. Click back on my fill, change it to whatever I color I want. So now I have a couple different shapes on my artboard and we're gonna notice another big concept in Illustrator. In Illustrator, since I drew this circle after I drew that circle, this circle benefits from what we call the stacking order. So in Illustrator, as you create shapes, they're going sort of into depth. There is one shape created and then the next shape above that shape and then the next shape above that shape. So start to kind of understand that that's something where there's, it's very, it's very relational um, how your artwork uh, is created. But of course you have full and complete control anytime to constantly easily be working um, to modify that relationship. So for example, this circle right now that's in the back, I'm gonna go up to object since that's one of my objects. And I'm going to go to arrange this object to bring this object to the front. All right, so even though I drew it first, I can bring it to the front and reconfigure uh, that relationship. So I wanted to kind of just do one last little bit in this video and then for more in-depth focus on the pen tool i'm going to ask you to check out my next video so don't forget to click subscribe um, but when we're looking at these circles these objects when we choose you've been seeing me so far use the black selection tool to make my selections with my bounding box on i can make adjustments transformations but with my white uh, selection that's called the direct select tool with that tool when I go to hover over the white boxes that we're getting those that is called an anchor and I have smart guides um, selected so that for me as a beginner it starts, it starts to help me get the vocabulary so these anchors in addition to these line segments are what make up our paths. This is what contains all of the mathematical calculations I was talking about earlier, so that no matter what the transformation or manipulation, it's not gonna lose um, clarity of line, clarity of detail. So what we need to know why it's important to work with these anchors is that we can manipulate or edit this shape just from one particular point. You can see that the rest of the anchors are not selected, this one is selected, it's turned blue. This is where I can make my edit, okay? So once again, when I hover over, I've got the word anchor already clearly displayed here, and when I pass over a path, and so if you don't have that already activated, you can go up to view, because again, this is something that won't print, it's just something to help guide um, and facilitate your workflow. Under view, you can come down here to smart guides, and that's gonna, again, I think it's a really good work um, practice because it helps you to start to get used to the vocabulary. So I would have that checked and that's going to help guide you around. Now I pick my black selection tool, that's my general selection tool, pick up, trans, transform, rotate, and eventually I can hit delete on my keyboard 
and that's how I'm starting to um, get comfortable with working with very basic shapes in Illustrator. So give it a try, and uh, if you are ready to move on to creating um, more freehand, customized shapes, and open paths, check out my next video, and we're going to dive right into the pen tool and the curvature tool. Uh, thanks for watching.